my church, and uh, we only had two clap on that, but that's okay. Uh, man, I'm glad you love your church. And before I finish this series, man, you better love your church. Last week, we preached uh, out of Matthew chapter 16, and I really believe that God dropped that word in my spirit. And the, they had a problem in Matthew 16. They didn't know Jesus. We have a lot of people that say they know God, and they go to church, and, you know, man, they, they, they're they pretty good guys, but they don't know Jesus. And, you know, listen to me. I'm, I'm going to set you straight this morning. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you've not experienced him and, and quit making him just Savior, but make him Lord of your life, Lord means ownership, that you don't belong to yourself, you belong to God, that you've been blood-bought. If you've not went from hell to heaven, you're still in hell. Now, I know you don't hear preaching like this much in Baptist church anymore because we like the good, the good stuff, and I do too, and heaven's going to be good. But here's what I know. There's a lot of people still have a problem. They don't know Jesus. Now, they, their grandma did and papa did, and they're trying to get to heaven on their coattails, but that's not going to work. You, there's got to be a time, listen to me, there's got to be a time you say, God, save my soul. I believe in you. Take me to heaven. Forgive me of my sin. Wash me clean. Save my soul. And write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. If you did that, you're born again. But if you've not, you say, well, Brian, I did that. Here's the trick question. Was the Holy Spirit dealing with you? Because if the Holy Ghost wasn't dealing with you, it's an emotion. You're trying to be getting out of your sin. You're trying to get out of your problem. The Holy Spirit has to be drawing you. So there was a problem. They didn't know Jesus. But there was a solution, Greg. They finally got to know him. Watch this. Jesus, I'm going to stick with it. I don't care if I'm old school. Jesus is the answer to everything that you need in your life. Your marriage, Jesus. The church, Jesus. That's all you're going to get. That's all you're going to get out of me. You say, well, I'm waiting for a deep theological debate. There ain't going to be no debate. Jesus is the answer. You know, you say, if you don't like that, guess what? <laughs> You're probably going to hell. You need, you need Jesus in the center. He's the hub of everything in your life. He's not secondary. He's not somebody that you use when you get in trouble. He's not a get out of hell free card. He's Jesus. Now, I'm going to preach here in a minute, but I felt that in my spirit. And then when you find the purpose and the purpose finds you, then, listen to me, when, once you find a solution, you'll have the purpose in your life. You'll find what God created you to do. I believe with all of my heart, all of my heart, God called me to be a preacher and a pastor of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I really believe that with all my heart. That's my gifting. That's not bragging. That's my gifting. That's where God, God gave me a big mouth. Y'all say amen. I know y'all want to. Yeah, he gave me a big mouth, and that, that's what I do. I talk about my best friend, Jesus. You say, Brian, boy, you sure are radical. I'm going to talk about that here in just a moment. No, I love Jesus. I love the Lord. I love my wife, and I talk about her, but watch this. I love Jesus more. And when, when, who you love is who you're going to talk about. Who you love is who you're going to follow. Amen, y'all. Hey, y'all, that's good preaching. Y'all may not like, like it. Y'all may not act like it either, but it's true. So today my goal for this service is that somebody's spirit, y'all listen to me, that somebody's spirit will be revived. Somebody's, somebody's faith would just be revived. Somebody's joy would just come back, not like it used to be. I don't want to be like I used to be. My God, I want a deeper walk with Him. I want my joy to be revived in the Lord. And I want my praise, my vision, my hope, my dreams, my passion to be revived. i got to have that. Watch this, the church, and I'm speaking universal. The church has been on life support too long. The church has been on life support. Christians have been on life support for too long. And here's what I want to get you today. We're, they're barely getting by. They're barely getting by. 48,000 Southern Baptist churches. And out of the 48,000 Southern Baptist churches, 37,000 reported no baptism. Why? They're surviving, but they're not thriving. We got too many Christians and too many churches just sitting back, lackadaisical, sitting on their blessed assurance, and they're not being revived. I'm declaring today that not for revival, but that you would be revived in the Lord. Somebody praise God. I'm getting revived today. If you really believe it, I want you to praise. I'm, I'm getting revived. 
I'm not going to sit down no more. I'm going to be revived by the Holy Ghost. That's where I'm going today. See, if you have your Bible, Genesis 45, I'm telling you, the first service, mm, it's been a long time since I've been touched by the Lord like that. So, man, I hunger for that. And so, man, I hope and pray what we felt in the first service would spill over into the second service. I pray for a Holy Ghost, rapture shaken revival to be revived in this church. We're not going to die in this church. You say, Brian, you're too loud. You're to your own purpose, your own vision. I refuse to die without a vision. I refuse to stand before the Lord one day and him say, Brian Keith Rafferty, where was your vision? You had all power, all hope, all glory in you. Why didn't you use the Holy Spirit? I I'm not doing it. Hallelujah, I'm not doing it. I'm not looking for a big steeple house either. I'm looking for a church to be filled with the presence of God. That when people are driving down Highway 70, they'll feel something in their heart. They'll say, there's something drawing me. There's something about that house. I've got to get into the presence of the Lord. And God, I receive that in the name of Jesus. You would draw people north, east, south, and west, that they'd be drawn into this house. Because why? Jesus is God of this house. Somebody help me preach. I know you know it. Woo! Shake me up, turn me on, turn me loose. Hallelujah. Mm. Genesis chapter 45. Something's going to happen. Y'all just hold on. God, I receive it. Genesis 45. Yeah. I have people that's listening to the radio. And they'll be calling in and say, if I felt that on the radio, I've got to get that. And that's my prayer. That we wouldn't be a light show. If we've got to sit on the floor, let's praise God. Don't lose your vision of where we're going. All this little stuff that people pay attention to, that's a distraction from Satan to get you off course. My job as your pastor and as your leader is to keep us on course. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. But guess what? We're going, we're dreaming, and we're going to keep dreaming because I know God's in this house. How many of y'all feel the Lord? Man, it's so good. I got to go, man, because I can just, ooh, I can't wait to preach this. Genesis chapter 45, verse 25, is where we're going to start. Read down to verse 28. You there? Say amen. Turn your neighbor, give him a high five, and say, let's stir it up. <laughs> yeah, let's stir it up. Verse 25, so they went up out of Egypt. Egypt was the world. They finally come to their senses, and they got away from the worldly stuff. They came out of Egypt. Praise God, that preaches in itself. Listen, and came to their father Jacob. Jacob was Israel. So they finally came out of the world, come to their senses, got back to Jacob. Jacob represents Israel. Watch this. And to the land of Canaan, where it flows with milk and honey. Woo, y'all feel that? It's good stuff. Listen to this. And they told him Joseph is what? Joseph is still alive. All this father had was a bloody coat and said his son was dead. His son was dead. All he had to remember his son by, listen to me, was a bloody coat. Listen to me. It's a good word. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He did, watch this. In fact, he is the ruler of all Egypt. Jacob was stunned. See, he wasn't just alive. He was ruling and reigning. Woo. He was ruling and reigning. Jacob was what? He was stunned. He was shocked. He shocked his mama. Hallelujah. He did not believe them. Watch this. But when they told him everything Joseph had said to them, he went, he, when he saw the chart, the, 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 the cart, Joseph had sent to carry them back. Listen to this. Here's my, here's my text. The spirit, everybody say, the spirit of their father, Jacob. The spirit of their father, Jacob, revived. Revived. He said, I'm convinced. I'm convinced. He still hadn't seen him, but he said, there's something in me that says that my son is still alive. 
He said, you ain't got to say anything else. You get the horses. You get the, you get the chariots. You get them. I'm convinced. Let's go get him. I like this. He said, I'm convinced my son Joseph is still alive. I will. Watch this. I will go. I will see him before I die. Before I die, I will see the glory of God at Elkhorn Baptist Church. Before I die, I will see my Father of heart in heaven. Before I die, I will see over 5,000 souls saved. Before I die, I will see that. You can't stop it because I'm convinced. I'm convinced. The Bible says that Jacob's spirit was revived. Now, all listen to me. I want to teach you this for a moment. The word revive, write this down, is to restore. You say, Brian, what is he saved? Yes, he was saved. Brian, didn't he have the Holy Spirit in him? Yes, he had the Holy Spirit in him, but he, he was dying. He lost his joy. He, he lost, he, all he had was a bloody coat to remember his son. It means to revive means to refresh or, or recall or to return. In other words, what God is saying, listen to me. Very important you get this point because if not, you're going to miss the whole sermon. There's going to come a point in your life with your journey that when you walk with the Lord, you're going to need to be revived. You're going to need to be revived. You're going you're gonna to have to come back to the Lord. Don't just, listen, you just don't get saved. Very important, listen to me, because this has been a lie over, over, over history. Well, I remember getting saved. I got a baptism certificate, and I go to church every once in a while. Watch this. That does not mean you're born again. Now, this is a tough sermon, but this is right on course. You say, Brian, I thought today was Mother's Day. It is. Happy Mother's Day. I couldn't get this out of my spirit. And I really believe what God says, once you solve the problem, once you found your purpose, there's going to be some courses along the way that you're going to have to be revived. You're going to have to be revived. See, there comes a time you've got to have a perpetual. You've got to have a continual touch of the Lord. Sunday, have y'all noticed, Sunday's not enough. Come on, Sunday is not enough. That's why we have Wednesday night Bible study. So you can come in and fill your tank back up and go back out and get somebody to heaven. Listen, you've got as much of Jesus as you want. Quit blaming people around you that, well, I see them up there and they, they dancing with Jesus. And boy, they look crazy up there. Why don't you come get some? See, here's the thing. you got to revive your spirit. See, some, some things in your life, y'all hang with me, have to be revived. Your faith, watch me, has to be revived. It has to, your hope, your dreams, your vision, the devil's after you. He wants to kill you. But you've got something in you called truth. You've got something in you that's not dead. And you've got to feed that spirit so that spirit will come to life. You've got to do it. Your hope, your dreams, your enthusiasm. There's times I'm not going to lie. I come to church, I'm tired. Come to church, I'm tired. You say, Brian, you never act like it. You know why? You know why? I revive my spirit. And I get up front. You know why I sit up front? Huh? Because I'm your pastor and I walk back a lot. And I see a lot of things. Too much distraction. When I'm up front, I got my A game on. When, I got, when I'm up front, I'm looking at the Lord. Lord, I can't wait. I got to get you. I got to have you. Now watch me. Listen. Here's what you got to have. You got to have a continuous encounter with God. That's why it's very important to have, be at a spirit-led and a spirit-fed church. That when God wants to move, the preacher will shut up and say, Hey, does anybody need Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior? If somebody's hurting and tears are coming down their face, I'll stop my sermon and say, Hey, how can I pray for you? You got to be at a spirit-led, spirit-fed church. Your praise has to be revived. If not, listen to me, if not, here's what's going to happen. You'll just go through the motions. How many of you know the devil can raise his hand? How many of you know the devil can quote scripture? How many of you know the devil shows up at Elkhorn all the time? What are you doing that the devil cannot do? One thing is worship. He will not worship the Lord. And you can worship the Lord. Listen, you'll go through the motions. If your spirit doesn't get revived, you'll settle for a religious routine. You'll come in, and I'm telling you the truth. I preach this all the time, but it's so true. If you don't revive your spirit, and if you don't come alive, I'm telling you, you'll become religious. You'll be a part of a religious routine in your life. The next thing you know, you'll be about performance. 
how did I do today? Did I do okay today? How did I teach today? And I'm telling you, the devil will start lying to you. you got to revive yourself. Because it don't matter what y'all think about me anyhow. Lord loves me. He's got me. He's for me. You know what I'm saying? And it don't matter 450 prophets of Baal stand up and say, where's your God? I'll call fire down on you, bad boy. You say, Brian, can you do that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You say, whoa, he's spooky. No, it's Bible. It's amazing. We read the Bible. We study the Bible. We go to church. But when it comes to our time to use our faith and to revive our spirit, we think we got to call somebody who's got a close walk. Listen to me. Listen to me. Your service will come routine if you don't revive yourself. If you don't revive yourself, you, you'll get up here and just sing a song. I, I know this Beth, and I know this Greg, and I know this praise team. Some people say Chris plays the drums loud. Let me tell you, let me give you the side of this really quick. You know why he's hard on them drums? Because he feels something in his spirit. I don't know where my, my boy's at, but that's the truth. And say, see, because here's what we're worried about. Listen to me, I'm not here to offend you. I promise, I love you. But I'm tired of people believing the lies of a secret society, a country club religion. <laughs> I'm telling you, it don't work. I've just decided I'm not going to let a bar out shout me. I've been dancing with the devil too long. Hallelujah. I'm gonna, I've been two-stepping with you. I'm going to change partners. You know what I'm saying? So here's what I want to give you today, okay? Listen to me. Your spirit must be revived. Don't allow anything to steal your zeal. Don't allow anything to steal your zeal. If you're the only person on your pew, you praise the Lord. You praise the Lord. Titus chapter 3, verse 5. He saved us through the washing. Listen to me. He saved us through the washing of, of rebirth. And listen to this. And the renewal of the Holy Spirit. In other words, along my journey, there's going to come some potholes. There's going to come some detours. There's going to come some distractions. There's going to come some problems. There's going to become some anger issues in my life. What God is telling me, there's got to be a renewal of the Holy Ghost. There's got to be a renewal of the Holy Ghost. That's why when you come to church, we're, we're intentional. We're, we're on purpose about getting songs in the atmosphere, about getting worship in the atmosphere. Because we've realized you've got to have a renewing of that Holy Spirit. You've got to have a renewing of that Holy Spirit. Everybody say, stir me up, God. Have you ever went to a restaurant and ordered sweet tea? And uh, they come back, not on purpose, but they give you unsweet tea. Okay, we got a few. Y'all can relate to this. You ordered sweet tea. They bring you unsweet tea. And then the next thing they say, if you want to, you can use the packet on the table to add sweetener to your sweet tea. Well, let me go ahead and tell you, it takes approximately 14 packets of sugar. You say, Brian, how do you know? I've tried it. You say, Brian, you're a diabetic, you shouldn't do it. That day, in the name of Jesus Christ, I'll receive it, you know? It takes 14 packets. I've done this for real. I mean, they thought I was a, like a sugar monster or something. And I put it in there, and I kept talking, having a conversation with people, and that sugar would go straight to the bottom. Every single time, 14 packets of sugar would go straight to the bottom. So let me hear what I want to give you. I want this to get in your spirit today. I want this to get in your spirit today. The sugar don't make the tea sweet, but the stirring of the sugar makes the tea sweet. You can add 20 packets of sugar, but if you don't stir it up, what I'm trying to tell y'all this, you can have the Holy Ghost in you, but if you don't stir it up every once in a while, you're going to go, it's going to go down at the bottom, you're going to take a drink, and you're going to spit on everybody's table. What I'm trying to tell you, if you believe in prophecy, you got to stir it up every once in a while. If you believe in healing, you got to stir it up every once in a while. That Holy Ghost start coming up. And you'll start feeling stronger. See, that sugar adds stuff to that stuff. You know what I'm saying? It gets you strong. And then if you don't like it, put some more in it. Keep stirring. If you don't like it, put more in it. Keep stirring. You want more of the Holy Ghost? Put more in it. Hallelujah. Keep stirring. See, here's the deal. I believe that greater is he that is in me than he is in the world. But I believe in stirring that Holy Ghost up. The difference is this. we got too many people 
sitting back. They've been saved. They've got the Holy Spirit. But they're not speaking. Well, we just think that's radical. No, 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 no. You've not studied the Bible. Paul said, if you've got the gifts of the Spirit, stir them up. Because then it'll come like a fire. And see, what I'm trying to tell the churches today, and I get looked at, and I only get a lot of, get a lot of one-time invitations. That's okay. But what I'm sitting and saying is I've got the Holy Ghost in me. I am saved. I am sealed. I am going to heaven. I am born again. But, boy, I like stirring it up. Come on. I like stirring it up. You know how you stir it up? When you don't feel like stirring it up, stir it up. When you don't feel like praising, just start praising you start staring, I promise you that sugar and that Holy Ghost will come up and say, Brian, that's a bad analogy. You can call it every you want to. I'm preaching you, hallelujah. It's my sermon. I can preach ever how I want to. Jacob was down, depressed. Hadn't seen his son for 20 years. 20 years he had not seen Joseph. All he had was a bloody coat and a memory. And here's what God gave me. You know what? You know why people hated Joseph? Because of his coat. Now, youth, I'm going to preach to you just for a moment. I'm going to preach to you just for a moment. I want y'all to listen to me. It's you too, but especially those of them right now. The reason why people hated him was because his coat was colorful and it stood out. Joseph just didn't fit into any situation at school. Joseph just didn't fit in at work. He had a coat on him that was wrapped in many colors. And he stood out above and beyond anybody else. I just wonder today, the reason why people are fitting in is because they're taking off their covering. My God. They're taking off their coat. They're laying them to the side. And they're trying to fit in. And their coat is nowhere to be found. What I'm trying to tell you today, Joseph is a typology of Jesus. The reason why Jacob's spirit came to life is because it's one thing. Joseph was a typology of Jesus. He is alive. He is alive. And if that don't make your spirit start leaping and say, my God, he's alive. He was ruling. He was reigning. To death, hell, and the grave could not stop him. No weapon formed against him shall prosper in you either. You've got to believe in the revive of Jesus Christ in your life. You've got to believe it. He's alive. He's ruling. He's reigning. I want to give this to you. And this is where the Spirit dropped in the first service. And God, we receive it again today. Jacob was a man that wanted a blessed life. How many of you want a blessed life? Come on. So if your hand's not up, watch me. You'll never receive it. Yeah, there's a lot of people around. You took your coat off. Because here's what I know. When you put the coat on you and God's covering you, He'll walk with you through fire. He, you may be in the lion's den, but if you've got the coat of Jesus on you, he'll super glue those lion's mouth shut. And I promise you'll walk out. You may be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but you'll walk out smelling like a rose. Hallelujah. He'll walk with you through fire. Jacob wanted his blessing so bad. In, in Genesis chapter 25, this is a crazy story. Probably verses 1, 21 through 28. It says that there was a twin, Esau, Jacob and Esau. How many of y'all remember? We studied in Bible school. Jacob and Esau. And all of a sudden, you remember, Esau was coming out of his mother's womb first. The first child would receive a double blessing. Listen to me. Would receive a double portion because he was born first. And I see little Jacob in the mother's womb. That's the Bible says. Esau was in front of him. Esau was going through that mother's birth canal. And all of a sudden, the Bible says that Jacob reached up and grabbed his heel. Y'all listen to me. He reached up in his mother's womb. Little Esau, I'm going to get my blessing. I'm going to get double portion, double portion. And little Jacob behind him said, no, you're not. He was a heel grabber. He was a heel grabber. He reached up, grabbed his heel. He said, no, you're not. That's my blessing. Yanked him down. I wonder what that mama was feeling. God bless the mama. He said, you're not getting my blessing. I'll grab your heel, 
I'll climb over you, around you, under you, whatever I got to do. No, you're not. I'm a heel grabber. And then I found out, boy, Jacob was a mess. He was a mess. In Genesis chapter 27, as in, here they was, they've gotten older, they were teenagers. And Esau was a hairy young man. As they said his arms had hair all over it. And Jacob wanted his blessing so bad, check this out. He killed a goat, put the goat skin and the goat hair on his arm. His daddy was blind at this time. He was old and blind. And little Jacob, little schemer, <laughs> come up to his daddy. He said, here, daddy, I'm Esau, bless me. And his daddy rubbed his arm. He said, okay, you can have it. He wanted his blessing that bad. He was a heel grabber. He killed a goat. He was a goat killer. And I read on, it gets crazier, Jeremy. Listen to this. Heel grabber, goat killer. <laughs> Listen to this. In Genesis chapter 32, crazy. Listen to this. There was an angel that showed up. And Jacob got in a fight with an angel. He grabbed that angel in a headlock. How could you see this? And that old angel said, let me go, let me go, let me go. And Jacob had him in a headlock. He said, I'm not letting you go. You bless me. When's the last time you had an angel in a headlock? Come on, church. You say, well, that was good for Jacob. No, he's no respecter of person. If he'll do it for Jacob, he'll do it for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me go. I won't let you go. I got you in a headlock, and I'm not letting go till you bless me. If I got to kill a goat and put goat hair on my arm and stick it out, bless me. If I got to be a heel grabber, I'll grab your heels and shake you down and say, no, that's my blessing. You say, Brian, you're stingy. I want it all. I'll never settle. That's why what's wrong with church. They're settling for a half blessed, mediocrity, good, decent life. We got a lot of people here that are set up for 500 and never go to a thousand. Don't you think we're big enough? No. You say, Brian, you're loud. Yes. Because here's what I know. One thing the churches are missing. It's some heel grabbers. We're missing some, oh, angel rasters is what we're missing. We need to grab a hold and never let go until God blesses us. See, Jacob was, he was desperate. Y'all hang with me, I'm almost done. He was desperate. He was not going to settle for his brother in the birth canal. I'm getting out. That's my blessing. See, oh, this is good. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Esau didn't, re didn't, under didn't receive his blessing because he sold his birthright for a bowl of beans. Who got the blessing? Jacob. Jacob wanted it so bad, Donna. He said, can I have your birthright for a bowl of beans? He didn't even appreciate the blessing that God had him in. He could inherit it all. God is so good. A lot of people, you are blessed people. You are blessed people. And some of you are selling out. Oh, my gosh. You're selling out what God wants to give you. A double portion, a double blessing. But you've got to be a heel grabber. You've got to be a, an angel wrestler. You've got to know when to shout and when not to shout. Somebody's selling their blessing for a bowl of beans. You don't realize what you got. And sometimes you, you don't realize it till it's gone. It's the Holy Ghost preaching now. You don't realize you sold out. And God wants you to bless. See, Esau could have had it all, but he sold out. This is your Elkhorn. Golly. You say, Brian, do you hear him? Watch this. Yes, I hear the Lord. You say, Brian, what you sound like is talking. Can you hear me? What if God just told you? you got to be a heel grabber. So many people grab that blessing. It gets so tight. It gets so hard. You become so angry. Watch this. You let go. You let go. But I'm telling you, you hear the Lord speak. So many people are letting go, selling out. Elkhorn, 
we got, we're sitting on dynamite. Any of y'all need that tonight? We're sitting on some dynamite right now. Not, not like really, but still. Because I say that, y'all are like, we're sick. Either we'll sell out and we'll be comfortable where we're at. We got our blessing. We're hanging on for a blessing. We still got our beans in. We got our blessing. Hallelujah. But here's what's going to happen. Either you'll let go and we'll miss it or we'll hang on and receive it. Come on. How many of y'all want to receive a double portion of the Holy Ghost? A double portion of the blessing. A double portion in your marriage. A double portion of God working in your life. A double portion. Come on and praise His name. I receive it today. I receive it today. Hallelujah. you got to be hungry. you got to be desperate. you got to fight for it. you got to be a heel grabber, an angel wrestler. Woo! Oh, I think we can do better. I ain't going to never shut up. Hallelujah. But here's the thing. What I want to give you. God is not impressed with patty cake, patty cake Christians. He's not impressed with that. He's not impressed that you showed up to church today. You should be at church today. He's not impressed that you put money in the offering plate. You should put money in the offering plate. It's a pretty good business deal. If I was a businessman, if I if you had a boss, so listen, I'll tell you what I'll do. If you give back ten percent, I'll give you ninety. Ten percent pay off ninety. As a businessman, I would look at that and say, You sure? Yeah. All master for ten. You keep ninety. That's a pretty good business deal. The thing about it is, you got so many people done my part, doing my thing, patty cake, Christianity. God will not bless that. God will not bless the ones who come and just plop down. I said this in the first service, I'm going to say it in this service. If you are a Christian and you are not connected, you're just coming in, if you've been saved for a long time and you're not connected, watch this, y'all ready? Shame on you. That's what I'm talking about. I'm saved. I got the Holy Spirit, but you're not sharing it. Tricky, tricky. Tricky, tricky. Y'all okay? Tricky, tricky. Here's the deal. I refuse to lose my miracle from God. I'm asking. I'm a heel grabber. I'm an angel wrestler. I'm a type of person, man. You say, Brian, not everybody's like that. Can I ask you one question? How come you're not grabbing a heel? How come you're missing your blessing? How come? And then here's the thing. Here's one thing everybody wants is counseling. I'm telling you today, Jesus is the answer. If you'll put Jesus first and be a heel grabber, he'll bless you. You've got to break the rules sometimes. I said this in the first service. Thank God. I I know you've got to have bylaws. But here's the laws. Y'all ready? Here's Elkhorn's bylaws. Y'all ready? Everybody say, I'm ready. Come on. Don't y'all die on me. Shake your neighbor and say, it's time to get stirred up. Because you ain't going to sleep in this church service. Here's the, here's the bylaws. Y'all ready? Shake it up. Shake it up. Shake it up. Shake it up. You ain't going to sleep. Yeah, sleep. Hit them hard. Listen. Here's the, here's the bylaws of Elkhorn. Love God. Matthew chapter 22. With all your heart your soul, your mind, and your strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself, and hang the rest of the laws upon these two commands. If Elkhorn gets the first two right, you don't have to worry about the rest. That's true. And here's what I found out about bylaws. They write them according to what they wouldn't do. I'm sorry. No, I just stepped on Tina. Because you know how I know? Some people can break the rules, and some people can't. So they make the rules, the bylaws in the church, to fit the cording of the leadership. Whoops. Which we wouldn't do. But when somebody who they really like, 
And if it's family, they'll get away with it. Oh, I'm preaching now. I know it's going to be bad, Bob. But it's just the truth. Y'all know it is. That's why it's tricky to get mad. You know why I love Elkhorn? You know why I love my church? Because I really believe for the first time in my life, I'm at a church that loves all people. I really believe for the first time in my life, whether you're red, yellow, black, white, done a drug deal last night, or wherever you come from today, Elkhorn Baptist Church will love you for who you are and the God potential in you and not worried about anything else around you. We want you to get to heaven. That's my job. We got to get you to heaven. Hang the law on those two commands. Hang the law on those two commands. Praise team, you got to come. I refuse to let Elkhorn Baptist Church become a good steeple house. Average services. No, no, no. If you're looking for that, you're at the wrong house this morning. We here at Elkhorn, we want, we desire a fulfilling of Jesus Christ. We here at Elkhorn Baptist Church desire to bring the best out of your life. We here at Elkhorn Baptist Church want to see holy tears come down people's faces like they used to. What happened to those old church services? Well, man, when you was living in sin and the Holy Ghost showed up and started stirring your spirit, hey, man, it drove you to the altar. I remember this morning while well, we give an invitation, the power of God was so thick, you can't stand. I pray and declare a stirring, a movement, a restoring of some good old, Good old church service. I declare today that teenagers would be so close to God when something comes up in your life. You can't sit still. You've got to get to Jesus. I pray that. I don't want a three-point outline and a benediction and go home. I don't desire to come in and to please people and say, boy, that was a good sermon, but nothing ever changes. I know when God shows up, something God sized is going to happen. And I know this. It may have been a long time since you felt the Lord, the stirring of the Holy Ghost. Some of you have been selling out. Some of you, oh, you're saved. You've got the Holy Ghost in you, but you're not being stirred. It's not coming up. You look the same. You act the same. You took off your coat. You fit in now. There's nothing different about the church. You know why the world don't come to the church? Because they don't see a difference in the church than they do the world. But I'm telling you and I'm declaring today under the unction of God. Listen to me. I feel the Lord and I want you to listen to my voice today. We must. You must. You've got to be revived. You say, Brian, how do I get that? Here's how you get it. You just start praising God and start staring. Start staring at spirit, and boy, it'll start rising. It'll start mixing in with that soul. And boy, I'm telling you, 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 gotta, you can't let the flesh overtake your spirit and your soul. You've got to be so on fire for God, you've got to become a heel grabber. Elkhorn, you bunch of heel grabbers, hallelujah. You bunch of angel wrestlers, hallelujah. We need some daddies to grab, grab again, grab the heels of the altar. I'm not letting go till my baby gets it right. Oh, I'm preaching today. I, I got an angel in a headlock. That angel saying, let me go, let me go, let me go. I'm not letting you go until you bless me. Oh, I'm not letting go. Until my family gets it right. And daddy, if you want to have your family be right, daddy got to get it right. I got an angel this morning. Uh, one beside Dana. That's another thing. I got an angel this morning. Some of you are going through a battle. You got to be a heel grabber. You got to be an angel wrestler. 
<laughs> Too many people got their dreams and got their visions, but they're letting go. They're letting go. Oh, I once had it. I once, I once was on fire. I once felt the Lord, but now he's slipping away. You got to grab it again, Randy. I'm not letting go. And if an angel tries to show up, I'll grab that joker and put him in a headlock. And I'll hang on until he blesses me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I praise you this morning. Hallelujah. Woo. I thank you, Lord. We need to be revived. Does anybody in here need to be revived today? Huh? Come on. Come on, we all need a closer walk with the Lord. We need some heel grabbers again. We need some angel rafters back in the church. You say, Brian, boy, you're radical. No, I'm just staring a little bit this morning. I'm just staring a little bit this morning. Oh, hallelujah. 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 God revived me. You want revival in your life? Watch me. Watch me. You want a revival? You want to be revived? Draw a circle on the floor and step into it and say, God, start here today. Start with me, God. Revive me. I'm a heel grabber. I'm an angel wrestler. I ain't giving up.